Hello, my friends. This is The Art of Prepping. I hope everyone's doing good today. In this video, I just want to speak a few words about the rapture. For some people, this may not be the video for you, um, but if you're a Christian and you've been thinking about end times lately, uh, this could be a video for you. Um, I'm making this video first and foremost because of all the misinformation out there when it comes to the rapture. A lot of unbiblical types of philosophy. Uh, it's quite disturbing. Um, I personally have been seeing a lot of videos that are putting out a lot of misinformation and propaganda concerning the rapture. And it's quite sad, really to see so many people believe this garbage. And so I'm just going to talk about some things here that I find somewhat important and revealing. There's a lot of prophecies that have to be fulfilled before we get into end times. And if you read the Bible, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of these prophecies have not been fulfilled yet. So when you see videos saying that, well, here in 2022, there's a high probability of being raptured out. That's just utter nonsense. It's utter nonsense because we haven't fulfilled a large number of prophecies that have to happen before the rapture. So for time's sake, I have thought about this and try to condense this down to some good examples that I can give you that shows that we're not going to be raptured out here in 2022. Certainly probably won't be raptured out in 2023 or 2024. At least that much we know for a fact, because there, there's so many things that have to happen. There, there's a timeline. You know, the Bible gives us a lot of context. It's not like when we read things that they're independent of each other. It all goes together. And so what a lot of people do, and it could be just out of ignorance, that they like to cherry pick various verses in the Bible. And they try to make it so that it seems like at any moment, any moment, we're going to be raptured out of this place. And that is not biblical. So let's look at what is biblical my first example is that we have to rebuild the temple. This would be the third temple in Jerusalem that has not been built yet. I'm not sure how many, many years it will take to build this temple, but it has not even started yet. So within the remaining months of 2022 left at the time of this video, I really highly doubt that we're going to have it built this year. I, if you ask me, I think it's going to take two to three years to really build it. That's just my thought on that. I could be off. But regardless, though, that has to be in place before end times. We have to have the temple. Okay, so that's that's one example of why we're not going to have the rapture this year or for probably the next few years at least, because there's the issue of the temple. Another example is that we have to have the seven seals. The seals have to be broken. Okay, so that hasn't happened. We know for a fact that the seven seals have not been broken and, and those prophecies there within those seals have not, have not been, you know, made real yet. I mean, it's not, it's not happened. So that right there is a big problem for a lot of people. Because if you look at the context of the timeline of the seals, it's probably going to take a number of years. It's somewhat debatable about what is the timeline there in terms of years. But it certainly will probably be more than two to three years, it looks like, that the seals are going to have to play out. So 
That has to happen before we get raptured. Another example is the Antichrist. The Antichrist not only has to be on the earth, of course the Antichrist is a human, but the Antichrist has to be involved in all of this chaos and destruction. It's involved with the fall of Jerusalem, the attack on Jerusalem, which causes the fall of Jerusalem, the abominations of the temple, which the temple hasn't been built yet, of course. And we have all these problems that haven't haven't happened yet, like the mark of the beast and all this. So that's a big problem. If those things haven't happened yet, then how can we be raptured out? Another example is that the two prophets, some people like to call them the, the two great prophets, and they prophesy God's word for like three and a half years. Okay? It's like 42 months is what it says in the Bible. Well, certainly that hasn't happened yet. I think we would notice because they are supposed to be given power by God to do great things great wonders and signs. So we haven't seen that yet for sure. So that's what I'm saying. It, it's It's got to be at least three and a half years before anything could happen. In my opinion, I think we have at least probably closer to four or five years minimum before we could expect anything to really happen close to the rapture. And I'm not saying the rapture is that close. I, I don't personally believe that. But I'm just saying though, if you know, if you were to look at the most, the minimum time left before we could possibly even have the rapture, we're going to have to have at least three and a half to four years from now if everything just starts happening right now, one after another. Okay, and my last example is that we have to have the seven trumpets. And we haven't had that yet, obviously, either. Now, on the seventh trumpet, though, that's the day of the Lord. That is when we get raptured up in the sky and Jesus comes down on the cloud. So that will be the rapture. To me, this is very clear. This is all very biblical. The book of Revelation is kind of like this outline. It's like, you know, of time. It's like a timeline. And so these are just five examples of many other examples that are available that you can see that things have to happen. There's a progression. There's an order to all this. It's not just like random. It's not random in the sense that we'll be sleeping and all of a sudden we're just raptured out of nowhere with no warning, with no signs. Okay. It also talks about throughout the Bible in various books about war, rumors of war and all this. Now, we've had war throughout human history, so that's not so unusual, but I think it's going to be at a level we've never seen before. It's going to be very, very escalated. The, the war and the rumors of war is just going to be everywhere, and it'll really kind of preoccupy us, a lot more so than just some kind of conflict. And I'm not going to try to, you know, make it sound like it's nothing, because people are dying in Ukraine and Russia. Well, the Russians um, and going into Ukraine, that's not like nothing. It certainly could be considered a type of war. Uh, but to say that that's actually like this, this war that's talked in the Bible, I don't see it. And even if this evolves into a world war, I don't know. It would have to be pretty epic and it would have to be really out of the norm in my opinion, to stand out enough to be in the Bible. So I would be curious to hear what you have to say. I know a lot of people don't believe in the timeline that I just said, even though it is biblical. A lot of people do subscribe to this ideology of a pre-tribulation rapture, which that clearly is not biblical. It is something that has been in recent years pushed by certain people. And there is a, an agenda behind that. And I would certainly uh, promote you to look into that if you for some reason have been taught the pre-tribulation theory uh, or propaganda is what I would call it you really want to question that and, and figure that out because you would be surprised how you are you are misled and I say that in a loving fashion you know um, you know it's so clear in the book of Revelation that God's people 
will be martyrs. There will be God's people will suffer. We're not just taken away from everything. We're not just like raptured away from all the danger. So there's a lot of problems with people who just make up their own version of the book of Revelation or just end times that's in the Bible. So I hope this is helpful at all just to get you started. You know, just I hope this is helpful on some level. You know, I, I hope that everyone out there is is feeling the peace and the clarity of God's word and that you read God's word on a daily basis. It helps me a lot. And I really do promote that because for a lot of us, we don't have an environment around us that is healthy. But what is healthy is having the understanding and the blessings of God. And there's a lot of wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit when you're seeking God. And what better way to seek God than in fellowship and from the word, you know. And so I would very much promote that you guys get a good translation of the Bible. There are some bad ones out there. And so you you do your own research, but don't don't just get one of these new age Bibles and think it's going to have everything in there because it doesn't. They take things out. Get a good translation and dig deep when you read it. For me, I take small amounts of the Bible at a time and really just try to digest it over the course of a day or two. And then I come back for more. It's hard just to run through the Bible and read a whole bunch at a time. There's just so much there. It's so deep and heavy. And so it's, it's I guess the better word for that, it's so rich, right? It's very rich in context and content. And so you need time to digest all that. So that's why some people, they refer to reading the word of God as bathing in the word. You know, it's like there are soaking in the word because there's just so much. It takes time for us in our limited form to just to understand a part of it. They call it a living word because it speaks to us even today. It's interactive. It's part of the spirit of God. Just think about all this. You guys take care, though. We'll talk soon.